Okay guys, new tutorial time. So this one is going to be around how we get those color swatches on our Udesley converted Shopify themes. Now this used to be a little bit of a pain to do before this tutorial. And thanks very much to the Udesley team for adding a nifty little custom attribute which basically allows us to apply a liquid object to a class, which is extremely, extremely handy. Sounds a little bit complicated, but it's really not. This tutorial is gonna have pretty much four custom attributes applied to a div and a very small piece of JavaScript to get this all working. And it will make it a very easy to customize swatch system that pretty much just leverages your CSS file, which uh, yeah, easy to maintain, easy to update, easy to add new ones okay so let's before we get started would you mind please hitting that little subscribe button it really helps me out and also i'm mixing around these tutorials a little bit so if you like this new format let me know in the comments below and uh yeah let's get started with the tutorial okay so here we are so i'm just going to continue on from previous tutorials so this is just editing a webflow e-commerce store startup theme. I'm in the products template and yeah, we're just going to basically get this to work. So if you aren't seeing color and size and stuff like that, all you need to do is go into your products and go into here, select a product, and then just go down here and just add in your options. So color and size or whatever else you need. Okay, so let's just go out of that. Now, the easiest way to do this is to basically not design the swatch within these buttons because it's a bit bit finicky so it can break and if you so for instance you try and drag and drop and move things around within this button it's going to throw an error but I'll show you what that looks like in a second and we will um, show you how to get around that so first what we're going to do is just going to create a div which is going to be our color swatch we'll give it a class of color swatch or whatever you you want really swatch all right and we're just going to give it some rough styling just to get it get us underway so we'll say two rim to rim, we'll give it a bit of a background color just so we can see what we're working with. And I'm gonna make the, the radius fully round. All right, so there we have it. Uh, I'm also gonna just put a little border on it so you can actually see what happens if it was white, for instance. So, boop, so you can actually still see it. Okay, so there we go. All right, so that's our rough color swatch. Now how this basically works is the color value here, we're gonna get the handle of it. So the handle is kind of like the URL or the slug of that particular value. And we're gonna pass that into the class. So if it was a red option, for instance, we'll pass a red value and it will create a dynamic class, so to speak, which will change the item to red. And if it was black, for instance, then if we remove that class and we say black, we can then style this one up again and we can say make it into a black color and then same same as if we were doing like say for instance a blue black so we can go blue hyphen black now it needs to have a hyphen if you're doing a multiple color or if you are say for instance creating a slashed color in shopify so if we go into here and you'll see here i've got a blue black option so what's going to happen is it's going to it's going to create a, a slash a handle like that with all lower cases. So just make sure that you are naming it accordingly. So blue hyphen black. And now what we can do is we can do this cool little gradient option. So we can just choose gradient. We'll go blue first one. And then this one will be our black. We'll do it as a little angle and then we'll just make these 50%. Okay, and then you get that cool little half and half image swatch. So very, very handy, very easy to customize or add a new color. It's very quick because all this is doing is just adding new combo classes for that particular color. And I'll show you how to do that at the end of the tutorial. All right, so that's pretty much that from a structure point of view. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to move that into this particular box. Now, what you would normally do is you would drag and drop it in and it's going to fight you a bit. So if I control exit and place it in there, it's going to do it. But now, Watch what happens. If I move this, it's gonna, oops, something went wrong. So it really struggles it. So I just cancel out of that, reload the page. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna command exit to cut it, paste it in there. And if we wanna move this text underneath, we just cut that, select the main button and paste it and we'll drop it underneath. Now, obviously you can go and you can style this up to your heart's content, but I'm just gonna keep it kind of simple for the time being and that's it. So what we need to do is just make sure we're removing this particular option. So just remove that for now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the conditional value. So basically what we're gonna do is, because we don't, we don't wanna display the swatch if it's um, size or fabric choice or whatever it is, because we wanna only wanna display it for color. All right, so we wanna be able to find that, we wanna source through and say, if this option is color, then show it. If not, then just hide the thing. So yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a liquid if statement. So select your, your color swatch, go into the cogs, down to custom attributes, and we're gonna type here, 
liquid colon if. All right, and then we're going to say option dot name equals. We're going to go single inverted comma, and then we're going to type this color like that. So now this spelling here is very very important. This could be called something else. It could be called blah, 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 whatever. But it just make sure that when you are setting these options up, that this particular value that you want to check the color against or create a class against is the correct one. So it's going to look for this particular option name. So you can just copy it and then just plop it in there and it will do the job because it's going to say, okay, if the option name equals this particular string or this particular text, then I'm going to show it. All right. Okay. So that's that. Next things what we're going to be doing is we need to get the value from these particular options, a so white, gray, and thing, and we need to pass that into our CSS class. To do that, we need to first get the liquid object. So what we're looking for, so just again, select your color swatch, another custom object, we're gonna go liquid object, and we're gonna say value. So we're gonna get the value, we're gonna go bar, so we're gonna give it a filter, and we're gonna say we wanna get the handle. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a new custom attribute, which allows us to place this particular value into our class list. So it's gonna be where, and we're gonna say class list. Make sure that the list has a capital L, okay? So it's class list, capital L, all right? So that's that. Now the final step that we need to do, well, second final step, because the final final step is the JavaScript, we need a way of finding this. Now you could put a an ID here, but that's gonna cause issues in terms of accessibility. So what we can do here to kind of get around that issue is we will go here and we'll go we'll type in data class. All right, and we're gonna give it a class of what we want. I'm gonna call it find swatch. And then what we're gonna do in our JavaScript, we're gonna look for find swatch, and then we're gonna replace and recreate the this kind of structure. So we'll say color swatch, and then it will have our value handle class that's assigned through the, the, the new meter field. So we'll just remove that. All right, so over into products, down we're gonna go into here, uh, we'll open that up, and we'll scroll down to our body tag. Now, all we need to do is just copy and paste this piece of code, I will have it below. And all it's doing is it's basically saying document query select to all, and it's looking for that data class find swatch that we've just configured. And then for each basically node element, what it's doing is looping through that and it's saying, okay, fine. So we want to add a color swatch to the class names and then we're adding back the, the, the node value class, the one that we've got, which is that value option handle so that it will create that class combo class structure like we have. So color swatch, blue swatch. So easy peasy. All right, so that's that. As I said before, this is gonna be below. You'll just probably have to wrap it in the scripts because I won't be able to have some of the script in the, the description fields below. But other than that, it should be okay. All right, so hit save. I'm just gonna publish just to kind of make sure everything is squared away. Uh, gonna run through the conversion and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so here we are. We're just gonna open that theme. It's all uploaded and done. So here we are. Uh, we'll scroll down, we'll go to this awesomeness project and we'll see here, look at our, our colors. So we can see our blue black swatch, our red swatch, our black swatch and our gray. So now what we wanna do, say for instance, you, your, your client has just added a new color. It's pretty straightforward. You could either go back into Webflow and just go and just add in a white value and then style to your heart's content. So, you know, white. Okay, so simple enough. And then you could export it out and just copy and paste your CSS file over. If you haven't seen how to do that, you don't know how to do that in terms of hot swapping and doing quick changes like that, you can follow the tutorial that's on your, your screen now. Or else what we can do is we can go into the actual theme file and we go down to edit code. And if we go into the CSS, it'll be in our assets folder. Will be this one, and we just can control if we control, we find color dash swatch because that's the one we want to try and do, and then we should see here our different ones. So we, we want to copy that one, drop it down, we'll change this to white, and we'll just say it's a white color. Uh, and if we wanted to do another one, so let's just see what other color we got here. Let's do a green one, so it's like green, and we'll just give it the green color or whatever else you wanted to do. If you wanted to do RGB values or hex value or whatever you needed to do, pretty straightforward, hit save. And now if I go into products, let me go into our awesome, just type in here green, save, hit refresh a few times, and there we go. There's our, our green option. So very, very quick to add new colors. You know, you can, nice, you can do those different splits ones as well. 
and that is it. Okay guys, so that's the tutorial. So if you found that useful, please hit that like, share and subscribe button. And if you wanna see more of my face, and thank you very much if you do, hit this particular button up here right now and it will help you out with your custom meter fields. Uh, yeah, really useful. Uh, yep, that's it and uh, catch you later.